John, would you please come share the word with us? Good morning. Our first scripture reading this morning comes from Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 through 31, which can be found in your pew Bible on page 2. Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, over the livestock, and all the wild animals, over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful, increase in numbers, fill the earth and subdue it, rule over the fish of the sea, the birds in the sky, and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds of the, in the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw that he had made and it was good. There was an evening, there was a morning, and there was a sixth day. The second reading comes from the pew, or from Paul's letter to the Romans chapter 8, verses 26 through 30, which can be found in your pew Bible on page 1152. In the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness, we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our heart knows that the minds of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with God's will. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be confirmed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called, those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I have to admit, I am somewhat uh, conflicted on my sermon this morning and what to preach, especially in light of the last 24 hours and uh, what it has looked like as we watch the news. In fact, I was sitting in the Sunday school class this morning and we were talking about uh, the tragedy in El Paso uh, when it was Jackie mentioned that there had been another one in Ohio and I simply could not believe it. Again, less than 24 hours. This morning, the uh, sermon that I had planned, and it, I think, will mostly work. 
The sermon that I had planned uh, was on, uh, based upon a uh, book beginning a series uh, for the next several Sundays, a book by uh, the Reverend Adam Hamilton, uh, who is a United Methodist pastor and happens to be a uh, pastor of the largest uh, Methodist church in the United States, uh, the Church of the Resurrection in Leewood, Kansas. And I had the opportunity, Leewood is a suburb of Kansas City, and I've had the opportunity to go worship uh, with the Church of the Resurrection and hear uh, Adam speak. He's a fine preacher, and uh, somehow all of his sermons end up being books. Uh, they are fantastic and great reads, and he covers a whole lot more than I have uh, the ability or time to do in seven minutes, um, but uh, his book is on half-truths, uh, things that, you know, we've heard, things that we've maybe said uh, at different times, and there's a grain of truth. There's uh, maybe even some scripture to support these beliefs, but maybe we should step back and evaluate in light of all of scripture, is this statement that we have heard or said over the years, is it absolutely always true? So the first one that he brings up in his first chapter is everything happens for a reason. Everything happens for a reason. Now, of course, when we think of cause and effect, that is true. There is often a cause and an effect. My grandmother, my mother's mother, smoked all of her life. She died of COPD, and she had two uh, spots in her lungs that she decided that she was never going to have looked at because she didn't want to know. Cause and effect. There were consequences to her choices. But often, Reverend Hamilton Posits, often we use this statement, everything happens for a reason, in light of suffering. We don't say it quite this way, but you may have heard it uh, saying that, well, somebody who died in a car accident, it must have been their time. Or to the mother who loses her child in stillbirth, God wanted that child. Or God has a plan and a purpose in this. You see, the problem is that when we are in the midst of suffering, the last thing we want to hear is God did this. You see, there's a very small and thin and fine line between God's plan and God's purpose, and God did this. You see, if we were to say to the families who are mourning their loved ones that God has a plan and a purpose in this shooting, then it logically proceeds that God put that gunman there and put those shoppers there. And it was all part of God's grand plan and design. That becomes, well, for me, a real turn off. I'm not sure I want to meet that God who does that. Now, there are events in Scripture. We were just talking about one this morning in Sunday school where Elijah is uh, battling against Ahab and Jezebel and the prophets of Baal, and he builds a, uh, builds 
calls upon the prophets of Baal to build their own uh, altar and to call upon uh, their God to set it on fire, and of course nothing happens. And then Elijah does the same thing to prove his God's worth, and the whole thing is melted and turned to dust. The point is not how amazing God is. The point is that God is present and at work. But the question we have to ask is, every fire that comes down from heaven, is it the cause and act of the will of God? I had the opportunity just a couple of days ago to uh, be downtown at the 6th Street branch of Banner Bank. Uh, Someone a few days previously had somehow gotten my debit card number and tried to purchase $793 in some sense worth of auto mechanic tools online. Thankfully, at the moment, I didn't have $793, so the bank uh, canceled the transaction before it even hit my account. They called me and they said, I think somebody is trying to fraudulently use your card. Did you try to make this purchase? I said, absolutely not. I wouldn't know what to do with that many tools. Well, Mr. Wheeler, we're going to have to cancel your debit card and you're going to need to wait seven to 10 business days to get a new one in the mail. Really, there's not another way we can do this, is there? Well, you can go to the downtown branch and have one printed. So I was sitting there at the downtown branch waiting after I had given all my information and I sat down and there was a lady seated next to me who was quite flustered. And I asked her, are you okay? And she proceeded to tell me that no, she was not, that someone had also gotten her debit card information and that she was traveling up here looking for a new home. I said, really, where are you from? She said, I'm from Paradise, California. And I lost everything. While she was up here with her husband and her elderly mother-in-law, her mother-in-law fell and broke her nose, smashed up her face, and spent two days in the hospital in Salem. Someone had gotten into her account through her debit card. They canceled it, and there she was sitting with no money to get home, no home to go to. Her husband and her mother-in-law in the car waiting. There's no way I can say to her, It's okay, God has a purpose in this. I don't believe that God brought the fire that destroyed paradise. I don't believe that God gave out hers or my debit card number to someone. And yet, and yet there we were, Together, I was certainly feeling a lot better about my circumstances listening to her story. But when it was time for me to get my debit card, I told her, I said, you know, I don't know if this is meaningful to you at all, but can I keep you in my prayers? And she said, I need them more than you know. Who's to say how and why I was there in that moment? The good news is, as 
We read just a little bit ago that God is with us, that the Spirit helps us. The Spirit is present when we do not know how to pray as we ought. The Spirit intercedes for us. And then Paul says what for me is the greatest gift in life's suffering. He says, we know that all things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. There's a difference between God causes all things to happen and then chooses to make them happen for good. There's a difference between the cause and God taking all things, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and making them work for good. I don't believe God handed a gun to a shooter and sent them on a rampage. Somehow, God is present in the midst of that suffering. Somehow, some way, God is going to bring healing and hope and wholeness again. Here's the catch. Here's the kicker. It goes all the way back to Genesis chapter 1 that John read earlier. God has created all things, the heavens, the earth, the birds, the fish, everything. And then God decides to create humanity in God's image. But this creation, this specific creation, has a purpose. And God said, let us make humanity in our image according to our likeness, and let them have dominion. Responsibility. Care. Stewardship, the opportunity to do good or evil, as we will see. But dominion is given to humanity. Over the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, everything that moves on the earth. We are given responsibility. I remember a few years back in Kansas City, we were uh, struggling. This was after uh, September, years after September 11th, and uh, we were still struggling uh, as a uh, as a church being near and in proximity to uh, Muslims in our own community. And there was a great deal of uh, fear and misunderstanding. And we brought uh, a particular woman, I wish I could remember her name, uh, to come speak to us and share simply the tenets of their faith. And um, if you don't know them, it's, it's actually uh, good to know something about someone else's uh, religion. But in particular, there was one phrase that she taught us in, uh, in Arabic that uh, stuck with me. It's Isha uh, Allah. Isha Allah. And it is literally the will of God. It's just saying the will of God. If, you, if we were to say uh, whatever God wants, the will of God. And in a way, it gets used kind of flippantly to say uh, the will of God. Whatever happens, happens. Somehow God meant that to happen. If it's good, it came from God. If it's bad, it came from God. The will of God. 
It's a fatalism, actually. It's a fatalism that somehow God is causing bad things to happen. I don't believe that. I don't buy it for one moment. I do believe that God was present yesterday in El Paso. I do believe that God was present this morning in Dayton, Ohio. And he was there suffering with them. And he's here with us as our hearts are broken. May we exercise our dominion wisely. Amen. I would invite you to please stand as you are able for our affirmation of faith, which comes from the brief statement of faith of the Presbyterian Church USA. Pay close attention to the very first line. Let us reaffirm our faith together. In life and in death, we belong to God. Through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, we trust in the one triune God, the Holy One of Israel, whom alone we worship and serve. We trust in Jesus Christ, fully human, fully God. Jesus proclaimed the reign of God preaching good news to the poor and release to the captives, teaching by word and deed and blessing the children, healing the sick and binding up the brokenhearted, eating with outcasts, forgiving sinners, and calling all to repent and believe the gospel. Amen. May we all together go forth this morning in the strength of the Lord, leaning upon him, trusting in him that God is at work and that God is taking the mess of this world and making something good come out. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we all give thanks. Amen. Amen.